Hey all you creative string players out there, Jacob back here with you for another edition of the Pickup Test, an electric string player on YouTube, and today we've got a really unique review to share with you. So about a year ago we were at NAMM and we came across a very, very unique new effects pedal. The A1X4 by the venerable effects manufacturer Zoom. Those of you that have been with us for a while know that we tend to shy away from any reviews of effects pedals or multi-effects processors. And this is because there's really nothing bowed string specific about any of these products and there's already a million guitar, bass, and keyboard players on YouTube who are already doing a fantastic job reviewing these types of products. But this unit is a little bit different. Along with most of the standard effects you'd find catered to acoustic guitar, like models of different acoustic guitar bodies and EQs, this box also boasted presets and specific patches that the company claims had been created for violin. And it's not just violin, this unit also has specific effects for sax, harmonica, acoustic bass, etc. But of course, we'll leave those for another YouTube channel. And while this isn't the very first effects processor to have specific violin patches in it, I can think of the old Yamaha Magic Stomps uh, that were around in the early 2000s that had two patches. I remember it was preset 99 and 100. This unit is definitely the first one we've seen in a very, very long time. And after trying it out at NAMM last year, we knew we wanted to put this unit through its paces. So we decided to break this video down into three parts, and you can check the timestamps at the bottom if you want to shuttle around. We started with our standard tabletop review. That's where we're going to talk about the overall build quality, the ease of use, the feature set, and some of the most common situations where we think a box like this could be useful. Next, we're going to have a discussion with our testers about the overall concept of bowed string specific effects. Is it snake oil? And if so, how well does the zoom actually pull this off? And last but not least, we'll go through every violin specific effect in this unit so you can hear how well Zoom is pulling this off for yourself. So let's get started. First, let's talk about the box. We can see that it comes with a manual, the unit itself, a power supply, which is much appreciated, and the incredibly cool and very useful MAA1 mic amp, which we'll be talking about a little bit later in this review. On the back of the unit, we have some very simple ins and outs, a single quarter inch input, a USB port for connecting with the Zoom Tone Lab, which is a really convenient way to store and create presets, a stereo output, which allows you to connect to multiple sources at once, a very handy and unusual feature for a box this affordable. And even though there's not a specific headphone output, the stereo output can be used with headphones, making the zoom an even more attractive practice tool. And an auxiliary input, which is a very handy feature for buskers or wedding performers, whether you're playing along with tracks or you want some extra music running in the background during your breaks. For those of you that don't have an auxiliary input in your amp, this is a pretty rare feature to find in effects processors and stomp boxes. The unit can also be powered either by a 9 volt connector with the included power supply or via the USB bus or via batteries, which is pretty awesome. The unit is all plastic, but the kind of durable plastic that feels like it could hold up for quite a number of years. The knobs feel pretty good, and the two pedals have a really, really nice amount of give to them. My only complaint is the volume pedal, which feels extremely cheap and has almost no throw to it. But for the amount of money you're paying here, this probably won't be a deal breaker. The lights and screen are nice and bright and hold up well in most lighting situations. 
Overall, we found the Zoom extremely easy and intuitive to use. And while the unit does come with a small manual, I only had to crack it open once during our entire session. For the most part, this really is a plug and play unit, which is really saying something considering how many features the Zoom really has under the hood. Going through all the features of this box might take weeks. It's truly remarkable what they're able to pack into a $150 MSRP package. A few other features that really caught our eye right off the bat was the looper, which was extremely nice to use with the double pedal integration. I've never been a fan of those single pedal loopers like TC's Ditto and the integration with the screen, allowing you to see exactly where you are in the loop. The looper also gives you the ability to place it. The looper block can also be placed at the beginning of your signal chain for dialing in your sound at the beginning of a gig or the end for creating ambient textures or pads. And there's a ton of onboard rhythm patterns as well, which I personally wouldn't use for performance, but are a lot of fun in a practice situation. You can chain up to five effects at a time here, and storing and organizing them are relatively easy, even if you don't like diving through menus. If all of this wasn't enough value, there's also a host of standard effects that you'd find in stomp boxes or multi-effects units designed for electric guitar, including different amp and cab simulators, reverb, delay, and modulation effects, different types of filters and compressors. It's good to note that this unit comes with emulations of virtually every acoustic preamp on the market, from the Fishman Platinum to the Bags venue to the Radial Tone Bone, all of which we've reviewed on thepickuptest.com. And while we didn't have all day in the studio, we thought it might be fun to at least shoot out one of these. So we checked out the emulation of the Radial Tone Bone PZ Pre with the Zoom. It comes with another little doohickey that's yes. like a, it, it's essentially a little battery powered phantom power. Which is actually thing. more nicely made than the unit, <laughs> I think. It's included. It's included for free. It, it has a gain knob, 48 volt phantom. So if you're a gigger and you just have a little microphone yeah. uh, that's phantom powered or not, you can have access to you know uh, all the effects. Or if you just need a quick you know mute pedal as a string player, how many times have you been on stage and with a bunch of mic'd players in a string section and you really wish you could mute just to tune or find your first note or whatever? You know, even for that, uh, there's just a tremendous amount of different. Uh, usages for this. Also is that if you have, uh, you know, a lot of folks that might just be getting into or just be getting interested in uh, electric violin playing, maybe you have a microphone, a lavalier mic, like a Countryman or a, a DPA or something that you use for gigs, um, you can plug into this unit with it and you don't need any, you know, norm normally to go into a, a stomp box like this, you'd need well, exactly what it comes with. You know, you'd have to go get that separately and figure out ways to, you know, the way to get your mic into the uh, the pedal board, which yeah. has a quarter inch input. Um, but this has uh, got everything you need. Conversely, I found myself just using that little interface the All other right. day uh, for a stereo rig in my Helix. You know, I just plugged in a DPA microphone, and it just gave me the ability to do that. I'm using an HX Stomp, the tiny one, so it doesn't have any XLR inputs. It just right. has two quarter inch. Unbelievably versatile, even without the unit. I think that thing alone I pay 50 bucks for yeah, in a heartbeat. To do our testing, Paul and I visited the studio of Colin Liebig, who is a fantastic engineer, producer, and partner in some of the biggest audio companies around, like BAE, Mojave Audio, and more. We recorded directly into a BAE direct box through Burl Mothership converters and then into Pro Tools. And of course, there was no added EQ effects or anything else beyond what the box itself was actually giving us. Thank you. 
checking out the presets on the screen that they tended to include the same types of delay and reverb etc and featured one to two specific violin effects up front let's dive into these violin effects in more details and to give you the best idea of all of the sonic possibilities for each of these presets Paul recorded a loop on his Eventide Age 9 going into the Zoom, which freed up his hands to do some tweaking, which you'll be able to hear and see in real time. From an engineer's standpoint, you know, as you were just listening to us kind of well, futzing with well, it. Well, this kind of gets into the get what you pay for kind of deal. Mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely sounds like an EQ in a $149 box. Right. But it works. Yeah. You know, I'll say that for it. It's not the most pristine EQ. Yeah. But it gets the job done, and I think it's going to be really helpful to someone in a live situation where they need a little EQing. For, for my part, this particular thing about this pedal is one of the things that shines. Uh, I'm always kind of thinking of these sorts of things as primarily in the context of live performance and, and shows and stuff. Sure. Like, you know, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not the, the greatest sounding EQ, but it is thought out well in terms of, like, each band I could go through and kind of, like, figure out what aspect of the sound, particularly the violin sound that it was manipulating. And that's hardly ever the case with fixed band EQs that you're dealing with with uh, uh, pedals that were you know primarily made for acoustic guitar right exactly um, they've shifted the the bands around in such a way that it, they're quite useful i think for well i like to say the limitations make it quick make right it very easy to use yes yeah. again so this is again, really you know, where that trade they makes nailed sense. their market yeah it makes sense yeah yeah yeah, I was impressed listening in the headphones to Paul how, yes, exactly, a lot of the time when string players first start getting into trying to use an EQ and a standard kind of preamp DI box, all of which we've reviewed on the site if you want to check those out, um, it was just really nice to have a lot of, almost all of the bands be in a place that was really musically useful for your instrument. Right. Um, and, well, I um, think just about anybody, even if you're not used to using EQs, could easily tweak it and go, hey, 
here's the sound I want. Yeah, very yeah, quick. Yeah, and you much don't have more. to be a master. Exactly. And I like that kind of stuff. Yeah, it was it very. It fits with the culture of the box. Yeah. for a second about the idea of violin distortion. Uh, now, uh, Paul is probably the best rock violinist I know. Well, definitely the best I know, but maybe the best I've ever heard. And uh, this is definitely one of the most overused effects by uh, string players who have no idea what they're doing these days. I'd say that's probably the number one uh, most hack kind of move is to put on a distortion <laughs> pedal for a violinist these days. Sorry, everyone on YouTube. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, this one was really curious to me. Now, uh, unfortunately, even though the documentation itself, i.e., or I would say the instructions on the pedal are very good, uh, the manual was very useful as far as if you want to know how to turn off an effect or how to scroll through presets. But as usual with especially Asian brands that are low budget, things get lost in translation when it comes to actual documentation. Um, for example, some of the descriptions of these presets were things like, Sa make your violin sound rich, or, you know, <laughs> you know, open the beautiful tone of the instrument, like completely useless, non-descriptive, but on their website, but pretty, but pretty <laughs> right, uh, some of them are almost a haiku, I, I didn't check, but in, in one case, on the website, as I was looking around for an explanation of what violin distortion might mean to them, I didn't find an explanation of is this supposed to be emulating a fuzz or a ger germanium-based fuzz. Or a, obviously, guitarists are very sophisticated about these things, uh, but there was an explanation of what they thought violin distortion was or what they were trying to do with this patch that was violin-specific. And I'm just going to read this to you guys. The bowing attack is key to the expression of the violinist. To create the electrified sensation of distortion without losing the bowing attack, the distortion effect for violin shifts the clipping one octave higher, boosts the high frequency, and reduces the lows. This creates a more balanced saturation that suits the sonic characteristics of the violin, and they have a somewhat unhelpful to me uh, uh, little uh, graph frequency response of graph. a frequency response uh, yeah. uh, for violin versus that's for, interesting. <laughs> I'll show that to you, Colin. Oh wow! You can have a look at it, and I'll just let you guys react uh, before I say anything. Now that we've actually heard the distortion um, and given well, Paul a chance, as you can see in the video, to dial in and mess with some of the various settings. Hearing it through the through the desk. Not so much. Not so that much. That was probably the one effect that I was disappointed with. Yeah. It just, to me, stripped out the bottom, and I'm looking at their little graph here, and now I see why. It just right. kind of cuts it off. And I, no thanks. No thanks. Paul, what was your... Well, I mean, I've, I you know, played hundreds, possibly, of uh, uh, distortion pedals, uh, and... I can vouch for that. <laughs> I've heard him play hundreds of just <laughs> all at once over the no, years. But uh, they, they're, it's really hard to find one that sounds good with a violin, especially if you're going direct. You know, you can you can get a good sound if you're going to a tube amp, and you know, there's a little more leeway. But some um, more air, obviously, if you're miking the amp. And, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. But, all those uh, things help. But like direct violin is already a pretty brutal sound sure. um, to deal with, <laughs> and uh, direct distorted violin has got to be. It's like it's kind of up there on my my torture list generally, but like in the grand spectrum of like distortions and overdrives and fuzz pedals and stuff that I've tried over the years in the search of ones that sound good, this was not awful. Right. You know. Yeah. It's it's not obviously like uh, the greatest 
like kind of holy grail sound. I, I just think it's um, it's it could be useful in the right situation. Yeah, um, it's not something I would you know necessarily be, well, be reaching for. Well, but there was a, there the was pedal. a drop in the dB when you switched to it, so that I didn't like because yeah. all of a sudden it it, it dipped. Right. But that is one thing that I noticed about uh, the different presets and stuff is there is some like significant level variation. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. There, there there's an auto save level. function. Yeah. yeah, and if I was, you know, if I would have taken more time, I think we could have ameliorated some of that. But I do think that um, one thing that was helpful were, and Paul actually plays, you can hear Paul playing one of his distortion, one of his favorite distortions that's on his pedal board. And you can hear him getting relatively close to the sound of the zoom. I prefer your pedal uh, to the zoom. But one thing that I did like about it was the feature set. Because obviously, if you're going to experiment with EQ and not sound awful, this is almost a public service message. Let me look into the camera uh, for violins. Um, you absolutely have to know how to use EQ and be able to and have some type of filtering either on the pedal or before or after. You know, I uh, saw Tom uh, Bukovic or Bukovac, the National Session guitarist, and he was talking about how every guitar is like their secret weapon is that old boss EQ pedal, you mm -hmm. know, and how every single different from subtle overdrive to crazy sounds, you know, he's always using that pedal along with his you know, overdrives, this huge collab is sort of part and parcel. And as string players using, you know, distortions that aren't designed, except for this one, for our instruments, understanding how to use EQ and having access to basic EQ controls. And I would say also this had a blend control, which some distortions do, like uh, I'm thinking of the... Uh, That's a uh, very helpful... The, the Voodoo control. Lab one. Yes, especially, again, for us. So as a feature set, I thought it was pretty cool. So what do we say with this effect? Snake oil or... <laughs> they could have done better. Could have done better. <laughs> I honestly think that there's something to it, you know, because it's like it, most distortion pedals are just not like it, you know, similarly to the uh, the EQ that we were talking about earlier. They're just not voiced for the instrument. Right. And this one, you can tell they put some thought into it at least. And I would say, uh, you know, it was uh, easier to use than than a lot of. Yeah. Distortions that I've yeah. tried. So ease of use and some of the tools you might need, but sonically nothing particularly Lack special luster. that you couldn't get from I have a, distortion a decent distortion pedal. <laughs> we'll no, it was, lack, it was lackluster. <laughs> it was just, it didn't wow me. I mean, was uh, you know uh, another kind of tricky thing to find one that works well on the violin because it's like uh, it, it's it's a essentially it's a, a bandpass filter right. that's movable. Right. What you're doing when you when you're activating a wah pedal yeah. or an auto wah pedal. So uh, it's very reliant on where that bandpass resides. Sure. And most guitar wahs are just too low for for it to be super effective with violin. Uh, I've 
I, you know, you could definitely hear that it was a wah. You yeah. know, I'll say that. It's, we were, I was able to dial it in to get to the point where, you know, you were, you, you were able to get a, like, a little funkiness out of it. And yeah, it was great. It was great. Yeah. I, 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 I was really pleased by it. I thought yeah, it sounded pretty good. That was one of you, sounded, probably your favorite. Right? sounded pretty Yeah, it was just, it, was, it wasn't, sorry, it, sorry, it just wasn't, you know, harsh. It wasn't all the things that affects yeah. can be. It was really pleasing to the ears. Yeah. It was fun. It made me smile. I was like, <laughs> oh, that's cool. There were also some, you know, emulators in there of a crybaby and stuff yeah, like yeah, that, too, which is kind of funny, things. but... Again, but, because this one was the violin specific, right? Yeah. So with some of the other ones, we didn't try them with the violin, but you might run into that issue where it's like not the ideal uh, location of the, the the filter for the instrument. But this one I thought worked really well. It sounded you know kind of had a fluidity to it, and uh, you were able to it was get consistent. In, yeah, you were able to get in there because we were messing around with the loop uh, and really kind of like find the uh, the place where the envelope you know uh, what do you call it the the tatter the yeah. Um, the the sensitivity like sensitivity you know, yeah. yeah it's called something else in the pedal though they call it I think it might be called sensitivity maybe Sense. <laughs> yeah um. but uh, anyway you could you could dial it in to the point where you know it was uh, activating consistently and right. controllably that's, yeah yeah that's the main thing. Yeah. Next, we talked about the violin D piezo feature, which is designed to take some of the piezo harshness out of your violin signal. It's very Italian. It's yeah, the exactly. D -P. The piezo. The D P. Yeah, we don't want. <laughs> Sorry, YouTube. Don't ban this video. Uh, so, what what were your impressions of that particular effect? Well, you can see on the video, uh, it does definitely do something, and it. Um, uh, does a little bit to take out some of the uh, excess, like clunky, low frequency bow change noise. Mm -hmm. That that's, was the that's biggest the most change noticeable I noticed, thing yeah. to me. Um, there was a bit of EQ uh, that you could a high uh, and a low. Yeah, you know, it, I, I wasn't super impressed with that. I think um, some of the other solutions that we've uh, talked about on here uh, for ameliorating that piezo ness that you get. Yeah, it's not like a tone dexter or anything. Don't think it's gonna you Right, know. yeah, yeah. Well it's not like not a, it's not like a, yeah. a game changing sort of thing. But it's not, you know, uh it's definitely not nothing. And uh, for again, just like in the context of everything else that this thing does, yeah. it's you know, it's cool to have it in there. And speaking of tone shaping, this box has a fantastic uh series of effects in its EQ section and there's a lot of EQs to choose from. Um, including an emulator of virtually every uh, major acoustic preamp on the market, <laughs> right. including the, the Bags Paracoustic, the Fishman Platinum, and okay, the let radial. Let me, let me go back. Okay. Take out the piezo and leave you with what? That was the issue I had with the sound of it. Uh, I see. It was like, what are you leaving with us? Or leaving with us now? You know, okay, we got this, we took out those little things you mentioned. But then again, that sound wasn't really great. Yeah. That we were left with. Maybe we should have played with the EQ on that. Yeah, I mean, in conjunction with the EQ, I think you might have been able to make something. But I agree, it did take some of the life out of it. Yeah. And uh, the like, what I'm dealing with in there, you were probably hearing more clearly and hear what was uh, happening. But I was I'm was mostly getting impressions of how it changes the response of what I'm playing. Well, that the attack was changed, everything was changed. Yeah. And, and that's a whole different realm to get into is that envelope of, uh, you know, again, 
You remove that and leave you with what? Right. It wasn't enjoy. I don't think it was, again, it was kind of just, okay, you took something key out of it. three-part series on octavers and how to use them effectively with bowed strings know that we're kind of snobs when it comes to this particular effect. And I have to say, the zoom, while not necessarily our favorite, held up really, really well. Especially considering, and I hate to keep coming back to this, that this particular unit costs about as much as some of our favorite octaver stomp boxes do by themselves. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the Zoom really sparked a conversation amongst Paul, Colin, and myself about the whole idea of string-specific effects and what their usefulness is, if any. The overall theme that emerged for us was that each of these effects tended to lower the barrier of entry for getting a decent usable tone on the violin. While the sound of the envelope filter or the distortion could be improved upon and could be easily achieved by other units, the feature sets and settings in each of these effects really did help lower the barrier of entry for violinists to get in and get a decent usable tone immediately. And while we weren't able to achieve the distortion, wah, or even overall EQ'd sound that we could from the finest gear on the market that we've tried, the truth is, is that because of the feature set and the basic settings on the Zoom, in almost every case, these effects lowered the barrier of entry and allowed us to get pretty decent results extremely quickly and easily. And that's really saying something considering that the Zoom pedal costs considerably less than some of those boutique distortion pedals, amps, or envelope filters cost by themselves. And while I agree with Colin that the A1X4 could be really fun in use as a studio tool to get interesting colors and textures, in live situations being able to quickly dial in a sound that's good enough is extremely compelling for almost all of us. At the pickup test, we rarely talk about a product as being good or bad. The truth is, is that almost any product on the market is designed for a specific type of player and a specific purpose. So what type of player or playing situations would this be best for? We mentioned it at the beginning of this review, but if you do any type of busking or outdoor gigging, this will give you access to enough sounds as well as the looping feature and some of the other goodies in here to get you through virtually any set you have. It also gives you extreme portability and with the auxiliary jack, extreme flexibility when it comes to playing along with accompaniment tracks. The Zoom is also ideal for beginners that are just getting started with effects. It's extremely easy to use with a tiny learning curve. And the whole concept of these violin-specific effects, particularly the EQ and the envelope filter, 
and the whole idea of violin specific effects allow you to get up and running and get a decent usable tone. And that's even if you've never used EQ, distortion, or wah-wah before. And while there's a ton of effects and colors for the most experimentally minded player to work with in here, the included mic amp means that this is also an ideal box for players who usually work in almost exclusively acoustic settings. Many of my violin and cello playing colleagues here in LA might only do studio work as a classical musician, but are occasionally working in a church, for example, and may own a lavalier microphone. Not only does the included mic amp allow you to get in and out, but it allows you to have basic functions like a mute and tuner switch. I can't tell you how often I wished I had something like that with me on stage when I only had my DPA microphone attached to my instrument, for example. Just having a tuner and a kill switch for a microphone alone would probably cost you as much as owning this box. After reviewing so many products over the years, it's rare that all of us are blown away by the overall quality and value of a specific piece of gear. But I have to say that this Zoom really surpassed all of our expectations. And as usual, none of these reviews are paid for or sponsored by the manufacturer. That's right, I bought this guy myself. And after this review, I'm gonna be keeping it. Well, we hope you enjoyed this review, and if you got to this point in the video, we're assuming that you found this both helpful and informative. And if you did, we'd really appreciate you leaving a like, a comment, and subscribe for more videos just like this. Unlike in the guitar and bass world, there's not that many of us creative string players out there, and a whole lot fewer that can really understand and appreciate content like this. So every like and subscribe really, really helps us grow this small but vital community. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.